Hello, my friends. A very good morning. God bless all, all of you abundantly in the name of Jesus. And He blesses you when you do what pleases Him. Excuse me, just a moment, please. Very well. So, what happens? There is a secret which I mentioned yesterday and I'll repeat it now. For you to get all the blessings of God, for you to be the Abraham of life, a blessed person in life, to be the blessing. There is a secret to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. There is a secret. And the secret is sincerity. For you to be sincere with God. Because He knows what you go through, what I go through, what each of us face. So God is transparent, honest. He is the truth. He is purity. He is light. He is holiness. And those who return to God certainly need to have the conscience, a sincere conscience, to speak sincerely, to express themselves sincerely. And obviously, for a person to receive the spirit of truth, they need to abandon lies. They need to abandon deceit. They need to abandon the sins which they have or have been doing. I remember when I was young, I mentioned here yesterday about this. When I was young, to receive the Holy Spirit, I was pragmatic, pragmatic, radical. Because with God it's yes, yes, no, no. It is or it's not. God is not more or less. I would get the Bible and I would look in the New Testament where it was written. Spirit, the Holy Spirit, everything referring to the Holy Spirit. And I would take notes and I would meditate and I would search. I wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. What have I seen today? Many people have heard of the Holy Spirit. They want to receive the Holy Spirit. They want to receive and they say, Oh, I did this, I did that, I did the other things. However, they did not do what was needed to be done, which was to present their lives on the altar with sincerity. To make their spiritual, or rather to give their spiritual offering. A spiritual offering is that offering, we call it an, a spiritual offering, though in the Bible an offering is already spi spiritual. It represents the soul of a person. The offering represents, symbolizes, typifies what's inside of us. Do you want to know yourself? Evaluate the offering you place on the altar. Do you really want to know if you are sincere? Evaluate the offering you place on the altar. So by the offering which we place on the altar, which is sacred, we evaluate who we are. As Jesus said, the measure you use, the measure you give, the way you measure, you will be measured. 
the measure which you give, you will receive. So the Holy Spirit is the best that God has offered in these last days. First came God the Father, then God the Son. Today, we have available to those who want, to those who believe, to those who surrender, to those who desire the Holy Spirit. So He is the best which God has. It's Himself. Himself. But Bishop, the question, you know, I've fasted, I did the fast of Daniel, I did this, I did that, and I did not receive. Why? Why did you not receive? Because your surrender was not sincere. Your surrender was not accepted. Your sur your offering was not accepted before God. That's the reality. Look, when we love, we fall in love. You know the first love. You remember your first love. In the first love and the second, the third, the amount of loves we have, we will remember. The first love, it was that love which was pure, honest, sincere. We could say it was a total surrender. We think of the person we love. It's the first time. We're children, immature. We're young, infants. So our love, when it's dedicated to a person for the first time, we don't think of anything else. We only think of that love. Have you seen this? Everyone faces this. You probably have faced this. If you are an elderly, you are an adult, you are a person who has already lived a love, you know, to date. You lived the type of love with another person. So you know what I'm speaking of. And as well, you want to receive the Holy Spirit. That's how it is. You need to think. We only think, we only search, focus our minds on Him. Oh my God, I want to know you. I don't accept this life. I don't accept to be as I am. I want to change. I don't want to be selfish, vain. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be this or that. I want to be a person as your image, as your likeness. I have carried the image of my parents, but I want to carry your image. And I know only your spirit can do this. But God leaves available to us the right to enter His presence and receive the Holy Spirit. You have this right. You can be poor, pretty, ugly. You can be whatever you want, whatever you are. You can be the last of everyone, the last of all the people on the earth. You can receive the Holy Spirit. Look at what Jesus taught. Pay attention. Jesus said the following, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. So you want the Holy Spirit. You have to offer your life because He is everything which exists. He is everything. He is God. 
So for him to descend upon you, you have to present on his altar with an empty mind, empty of guilt, of resentment, guilt everyone has before God, but I say you have to enter the presence of God with your heart completely empty from resentment, because he says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, so your life, so if you bring your life to the altar, you place it on the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Then, wait. My brother has something against me. Or I have something against my brother. Or we are two hard-headed people who don't see eye to eye. So I am angry at so-and-so because so-and-so said this about me. The other one said that about me. Look, how many people kill themselves because there was a message about them on social media. Imagine, how can a person enter the presence of God before the altar with their lives, with their offering, with their life, their soul, and they are dirty. Is it possible for them to receive the Holy Spirit? No. No, because it depends on them, because only they can forgive their brother. And if they don't forgive their brother, or any other person who offended them, then they are also not forgiven. That's how it is. If you forgive, you're forgiven. If you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. For a person, when a person receives the Holy Spirit, it's because they were forgiven, they were accepted, their offering was accepted. Their offering was accepted. Then, they received the Holy Spirit. They gave an offering which pleased God. God pleased them and gave the Holy Spirit. The blessing of blessings. Which makes of us the blessing. So, Jesus leaves it clear. You go to the altar to place your offering. And before you remember you have something against your brother or they have something against you, gossip, etc. Then you have to leave the offering before the altar. If it's your soul, it can't climb the altar filled with grudges. It can't climb the altar and surrender in any manner, no. It needs to be pure, sincerely pure, truthfully pure in your conscience. Mistakes we all have. All of us make mistakes. Who is perfect? No one. Do you remember the adulteress who was caught in adultery? Jesus asked, who does not have a sin? Everyone has a sin. Whoever does not have a sin, cast the first stone. And she remained alone. And Jesus said, Lady, where are your accusers? She said, They left. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. She received forgiveness from Jesus. Because she was there, humiliated, embarrassed. Imagine her situation. Being caught in adultery. She was at the bottom of the pit. But, he forgave. And the Holy Spirit had not come yet because Jesus would only send the Holy Spirit after he would climb to the throne 
would sit on the right hand of the Father so that he could send the Holy Spirit. But if she continued in faith with no sin, certainly she received the Holy Spirit. So, this is how it is with you as well. You carry with you resentment. You carry with you weight. And this weight, which is this big sin for you to deny forgiveness because only you can forgive. Only you can forgive. If you don't forgive, no one is forgiven. That person won't be forgiven. Because that person is bound in your hands. But you're also bound in their hands because you did not forgive. And when the two die, they go to hell. If they don't forgive one another, there's no way we need to forgive. Forgiveness, forgiveness, my friend, is not a feeling. Forgiveness is an action. It doesn't matter if the heart, oh, I forgive. Put your heart aside. Forget your deceitful heart and forgive in your mind. Your mind has the capacity to obey, not the heart. If you give ears to the heart, you will never have the control of your life. But if you give ears to your head, your intellect, your conscience, with sincerity, and obey the word of God, you receive the Holy Spirit. Easy, easy. Because He expects this from you. He expects this. He is waiting on you. But you need to present yourself in an empty manner. Empty of yourself. Of your being, your will, your selfishness. Forgive me. And I forgive as well. Remember the Lord's Prayer, which He taught. In this prayer, He made sure to leave it clear. When a person prays, He teaching us, forgive our sins as we forgive our debtors. Meaning, if I don't forgive my debtors, then I'm not forgiven by God because I'm asking Him forgiveness, but as I forgive rather, so and so and the others. But if I didn't forgive, then He won't forgive me. Meaning, forgiveness is power. It's in your hands. You have power to forgive. Even if you have other sins, when a person makes a mistake against you, you may even fight with that person, be annoyed for some moments, for some time, but you come at night and say, My God, I fought with so and so. I forgive that person. Have mercy on them. Bless that person. So then you can talk to that person. It's better you talk to that person. Oh, I forgive you. There are cases where you can do this, but there are times where you can't. There are people who even died. How will you go before the grave and say, I forgive you? But if you pray to God, and you say, my God, I can't forgive that person in death. I wanted to tell this person, and you know my intention, but I forgive. I forgive. So you do your part. Forgiveness is yours. You have to forgive. Of course, you committed a sin against God. He has to forgive you. But you also need to ask, Oh God, forgive me. Forgive me as I forgive my offenders. Then a person says, Oh Bishop, this is difficult. You think that to reach to heaven, you'll find a wide and spacious and flourish road. And the gate is so wide that anyone can enter. Even the elephants can enter. No. 
The kingdom of heaven is taken by violence. You need to violate yourself. Violate your will, your being, your selfishness. And I'm saying this. For you to receive the Holy Spirit, you who haven't received. If you have received the Holy Spirit, this message to you is just knowledge because those who have the Holy Spirit naturally forgive. They forgive. They forgive. Every night I pray, forgive those who offend me. Forgive me as I forgive those who offend me, who treat me bad, who punish me, who lash on me, etc. You know my heart. Forgive. I don't want any harm to them. I don't want harm to anyone. That's why I preach the word of God, the word of justice. That's why I'm a preacher. I am a planter of the word of God. It's my profession. And I only think of this. And this is the reason, my friend, why we reached this point. We reached this point not by merit, but by an extraordinary effort. Imagine how many accusations, how much evil of those who hate me, they did to me. But may God have mercy on their souls as he had on mine. I want them to be saved. They did that. They did the other. Because they did not have knowledge of the living God. They cultivated or cultivate Baals, the children of Baal. But I will pray, oh my God, Forgive me as I forgive them. They are forgiven. If it depends on my forgiveness for them to be saved, they are saved then. So that's how it is, my friend. Present your offering on the altar. When you go to the altar and present your offering, even if it's monetary, it's money, it's a good, it's something which you will place on the altar. Evaluate well. If you are in the condition to be accepted. Because God does not accept any offering. Because everything is His. Everything is His. Or is it not? Anything you give to Him, it belongs to Him. Anything I offer to Him, it belongs to Him. He's the owner of everything. And everything which we supposedly have, in truth, is lent to us. God lent to me this body, this life, this air, this pure air which I breathe. God lent to me the sun. He lent to me everything. I'm the owner of everything and nothing. Everything is lent. So when we offer to God what already belongs to Him, then we have this pure conscience of forgiveness. We have no grudge against whoever it may be. I remember once, excuse me, once, excuse me, in one occasion, in one of these offenses, I was offended. I was offended. So, what did the devil want? He wanted that I would have grudges. Just that. Just a bit of grudges. It was enough for me to lose my salvation, my communion, my communion with the Holy Spirit. Then, what did I do? The Holy Spirit demanded from me. That's why when a person has the Holy Spirit, you have this resource, this tool. You have God Himself with that person, with you, to guide, to direct, to instruct. And the Holy Spirit said to me, look, you need to forgive. 
You need to forgive. And how can I forgive? If I don't even have contact with this person. Pray for that person. And that person was alive. I don't know if they're still alive. The person was alive. So I prayed for that person. Oh my God, I forgive so and so who did this with me and etc. When I prayed for that person, instantly, instantly, that resentment fell and went down. And I was at peace with myself and with God above everything. So take advantage, my friend. Evaluate your offering. Because in your offering, it shows, it reflects who you are. Your offering reflects what is inside of you. All right? Because your offering represents your soul. Our offering represents our soul. Don't forget that first love. When you were young, that passion, which you dreamt, you woke up, you kept thinking about it very well. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we only think of the things of God. We only think of Him. We only think of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is imminent right now, His return. All right? God bless you all. Tomorrow we will speak more about forgiveness. To open the understanding of people or to try make them understand that the power to enter the kingdom of God and receive the Holy Spirit is in their hands. It only depends on them, on you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.